Okay, it looks like we're live. Hey guys, happy Wednesday and happy meeting day. I am Kat with Get Down to Business, if this is your first time joining. Otherwise, you know me. And hey everybody, how's everyone doing tonight? Hey, Stephanie Schuster's here. Let's see who else we got. We have Kathy Cavalier. Hey, how are you? Kim Lee is here. Kim is one of our new moderators in the business group. Hey, Kim, thanks for being here. Um, we have a lot to get done tonight. We have over 20 pre-submitted questions to get through. Um, but I want to give people a little bit more time to pop in here. So let's start with a little warm-up question. Hey, Dolores. Hey, Carl. Hey, Dave. Lindsay, Paul, Heather, Jeremy, hey, Jessica, Lindsay. All right, awesome. So while we wait for a few more people to come in, let's start with a warm-up question, which we always used to do in the, the forum. So tell me what Disney Resort you are pining for, the one that you haven't yet been able to stay at, or even if you have where you want to stay again. Like, What's that resort that really um, gets you excited and you dream about all the time? For me, I think that is probably the Polynesian. I have stayed there. It's been a while, but it's absolutely beautiful. I'm in love with the atmosphere, the location, the views. Um, I have not yet stayed at the Grand Floridian, so I, I kind of pine for that. It's just not in the budget, and I don't know when it will be. But when someone says, where do you want to stay next? It's, it's for me, it's always the Polynesian. Let's see, what do we have here? Hey, Patricia Cobb. Hey, Casey. Casey is our newest panelist. Everyone help me welcome Casey. Casey Bolt to our panel. Wilderness Lodge. Beautiful, Sabrina. I had the pleasure of staying there at Christmas time. The boardwalk, Casey, the boardwalk is beautiful. Fort Wilderness looks so much fun. Let's see, what else we got? Hey, Lisa. Hi, Shannon. Oh, Polynesian, that's home to you, buddy? Yeah, I love it. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Tiffany. Paul, all of them. You're a first-timer. Well, you are going to be so blown away, Paul, with Disney World as a first-timer. Let's see. Hey, Cindy. Glad that you can make it tonight. Hey, Lena. Let's see. Jessica Hoffman. Oh, you want to stay at the Animal Kingdom? When you do, try and splurge for the Savannah view. Holy cow. What an experience to wake up in the morning and have animals just right outside your veranda. It's it's absolutely stunning. Wonderful, wonderful resort. Um, Chris loves the Epcot Area Resorts Beach Club. I have not, never stayed at Beach Club. I think that is my daughter's um, number one dream resort. We just haven't gotten there just yet. All right. Hey, Tina. All right. So we've got quite a few people here. So joining me tonight in answering all of your questions is the panel of Disney travel planning pros. So we've got, as you can see, Carl Dad Trent. We've got Shannon Bonador of uh, Destinations to Travel. That's my partner agency, along with a slew of agents from that agency. I work with these people every day. They're absolutely amazing agents, awesome people. We have Stephanie Schuster of WDW Magazine and It's a Fangirl World. We've got Dave Shute of YourFirstVisit.net, and Dave is also the co-author to The Easy Guide to Your Walt Disney World Visit. Dave is also the sponsor of our trivia question for each meeting, and winners of our trivia question get a signed copy of his amazing book. All right, um, I think also Patrick Pulliam of the Official Ticket Center will be popping in. Um, if he can, I know he's a pretty busy dude. And, of course, we've got Jeremy and Susanna always helping me behind the scenes with links and such to help me answer your questions the best way that I can. Okay, so I think we'll probably just dig in. Let me just see some of these comments. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Amber. Dun, dun, dun. Love the, oh yes, this is my office view. Let's talk about that. So usually I'm on the other side and you just see the boring wall. Well, this is what I look at every day. It's so much fun. I've definitely made my office a fun place to be since I am here uh, all the time. Um, this view will actually 
it may give you a view of my dog Seamus walking in and out. He is so out of sorts right now. He likes to be under the desk when I'm doing anything. And since I'm not under over there, he can't be under the desk. So he's a little bit out of sorts. He's actually laying behind me right now. So you, he may make a cameo appearance during the meeting. All right. Oh, Dave is blushing. Dave, did you notice I got the title of the book correct this time? Uh, Carol, late. No, Carol, you're not late. It's okay. We're just popping in. You're, you're dealing with your sweet granddaughter. I hope everything's okay. And she's just being a handful. Um, Susanna, you love Seamus. He, he is really cool. Uh, you want to see Seamus? Well, I, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. All right, so let's dig in because we do have like 20 questions to get through. And I also want to allow some, you know, conversation here and for you guys to be able to ask, ask questions in here. You like this view better? Well, actually, I may be in a completely different environment um, next time, um, but I'll talk about that later. Let's get to the questions. So unfortunately, Nicole McDonald, who's our first question, she had let me know that she wouldn't be able to make the first portion of the meeting, but I'm going to answer her question anyway. Nicole asks, if you bring your child to Disney to celebrate their graduation, do they honor it in any special way like they do for birthdays and anniversaries? Uh, Nicole, whatever you're celebrating, Disney wants to help you celebrate. So if you're making a big deal about the graduation, Disney will make a big deal about the graduation. Make sure when you make your reservations, you um, alert your travel agent, or if you're planning it yourself, um, make sure you tell Disney what you're celebrating. When you make dining reservations, make sure that celebration is noted on the dining reservations. The free desserts and cupcakes are typically at the discretion of the waiter. Most of them do it. Um, so I don't like to tell people to expect anything, but yeah, um, graduation is a pretty big celebration. We celebrated retirements, anniversaries, engagements, and we've always been awarded some kind of special treat if we were the button and we made a big deal and, and we let them know what we were celebrating. So I hope that answers your question and that would be um, a really fun way to celebrate graduation. All right. The next two questions kind of surround um, DVC rental. So let's let's talk about these. This is Kathy Cavalier. Kathy, I know you're here. Kathy is asking, when renting DVC units from, say, like David's DVC Rentals, who we definitely promote, are all on property options available, like Magic Bands, Magical Express, and option for buying dining plans? Okay, so yes. Um... When you rent points with DVC, everyone gets a magic band, you can take the Magical Express, and yes, you can opt to buy the dining plan. Do you rent the unit from them, then contact Disney directly to add on the others? Okay, so no. So if you want the dining plan, you're going to have to, this is important to know, if you're adding the dining plan when renting DVC points, you're going to have to pay for it in full up front, and the member is going to have to add that for you. So while you don't have to add it right away when you make your reservation for the room, you do have to do it, I think they request it within 60 days of your arrival. That gives Dave's DVC time to contact the member and then the member to um, make that dining plan adjustment for you. Um, as far as Magical Express, I know Dave's DVC has a link on their website um, that you can actually make the Magical Express reservation there or you can just call yourself. There's there's a number for that. Um, and you can make that reservation on your own. And park tickets. So park tickets, when you're renting DVC, this is a great opportunity to purchase your tickets at a discounted reseller and only use the authorized ones like the official ticketcenter.com. You know, you can save a few bucks on tickets. They'll send you the hard ticket if you like, or they'll send you an email with the number that you need to link it to your My Disney Experience account. So you're saving a few bucks on tickets, but you're linking it to your magic band. So when your magic band comes for your room reservation that you rented through Dave's, as long as the tickets are linked in your My Disney Experience, everything will be reflected on that band. The band is a reflection of your My Disney Experience account. So um, let me see what else do you have here. Looking for a grand villa. And while Disney World is slow to offer them up, there will be 11 of us next trip. Wow. All right, so Dave Shute would know better than me how many grand villas are available 
Um, but I can tell you that they do go fast because there are only a few. And um, I'm thinking that Old Key West and Saratoga Springs and the, the Treehouse Villas are probably the ones that would have availability the longest. But as soon as you can try and book those, definitely do that. I know um, you can book DVC uh, 11 months out. Um, but at David's, you can actually submit a form up to 12 months out and then just get on their waiting list. Um, all right, so there'll be 11 of you. Uh, you're going to get celebration shirts, right? <laughs> so let me talk about celebration shirts. If you don't already know, they make custom matching shirts for your Disney vacation for any celebration that you want to be like twinsies with you, the rest of your family. I'm wearing one now. They are so kind to outfit me for all of these meetings. And you can't really tell, I don't think, but this is like a neon orange shirt. I love it. Um, it's awesome. So this is the design that they made for me. Now you can you can buy this one if you want to on the website. You can choose from, I don't know, maybe two dozen of their really slick styles, or you can design your own. That's, that's really awesome. You can work with them to create a custom design shirt for your family's trip, your work trip, whatever you're celebrating. Um, and it, there's no minimum. You can do one if you have like this really, um, unique, uh, design that you have in mind for one specific purpose. They're really cool people to work with. Um, their website is celebrationshirts.com. I'm sure Susanna and Jeremy can post the link in there for you. Uh, whether you decide to get your own design made, buy this one, buy another one of their designs, be sure you're using the code DISNESS at checkout. It's D-I-S-N-E-S-S -S because they give all my friends 10% off. So check it out. And on top of that, on top of the 10% discount, they also offer free shipping on all their orders. So um, definitely a great deal. So check them out. Definitely happy for your 11-person um, family vacation. That sounds really amazing. And I hope you get uh, a grand villa. I don't know if it does look pink, Lena, but it's like neon orange. If this was the daylight, you could see. I love it. Okay, so Dave says most at Old Key West and Saratoga Springs, none at the treehouse. I, I thought the treehouse fit 12. I guess they don't. Okay. Um, but that, that sounds like a wonderful trip, Kathy. And if you have any other questions about DVC rentals, let me know. I've done it several times, um, and I recommend it not necessarily for everybody, but I know you've been there before, and um, I think it would be a good move for you. Now, Kelly also has a question. Kelly Henderson. I'm not sure if you're here, Kelly. I didn't get a chance to see, but I hope you are. Kelly asks, our family of three is planning to visit Walt Disney World next spring, and the lodging options are making my head spin a little. Since we have an upcoming trip this September, we will have the option of booking a bounce-back offer. I could try for an annual pass holder discount, or we thought about giving DVC rental a try. How do we decide which is best? Okay, so let's take this one by one. Um, bounce-back offers are not guaranteed. Um, they don't always offer them. Uh, if you're going in September, there's a good chance that there will be a bounce back offer. And let's say that's for free dining. That's a popular bounce back offer. So you have a family of three, and I believe you're all considered Disney adults. So now that we know that the 2018 prices are out, um, you could figure out how much a free dining plan would be worth for you, right? So this is, Kelly, this is all going to come down to the math, unfortunately. You're going to have to do a little math here to figure it out. So find out, you know, let's assume that the bounce back offer would be free dining. So figure out how much that would save you. Then if you did get the pass holder, if you did get an annual pass, your room discount would be anywhere from 25 to 35%. Typically, I mean, who knows what Disney's going to do, but in the past, annual pass holder room discounts are between 25 and 35%, depending on which level you stay at, value, moderate, or deluxe. So couple that with the merchandise and dining discount as well as park free parking if you're driving, 
that could be a bigger savings for you than the dining plan. So now renting DVC points, that will save you the most on a room at almost 50%, but it will only be on a deluxe. So if you're willing or you want to stay deluxe, that might be worth it to you, but it might not be um, number-wise the best value. It's all going to be math, Kelly, and um, when you're ready to do this, you know, you can hit me up and we'll work it out together, I promise. All right. Um, hi, Angela. Let me see. I want to catch up here. Hi, Matthew. Thanks. You love my shirt? I do, too. Let's see. Carol Lewis going to Christmas party. Um, I just want to stick to the thing here. Tree house is only eight. Okay, Carl, thank you. Wasn't sure. Tree houses have three bedrooms, but they sleep nine. Okay, but that still wouldn't be good for you, Kathy. So you definitely need the Grand Villa. Or you can do a collection of, you know, two bedrooms, studios, one bedroom. Um, days will work with you, you know, just let them know what you're trying to do and they'll try and find accommodations for you, even if it's not a grand villa. Nine, eight, who's counting? <laughs> Let's see. Um, bum, bum, bum. Okay. Historically free dining is a bounce back in September and then October, I think it switches to room only. Okay. So it's a good bet, Kelly, to, um, count on the bounce bag being free dining when we're doing that math to figure out what's the better deal for you guys. All right, so next question is from Lena Hall. And Lena, thank you so much for offering to be one of our moderators in the group. I really do need it as our group is growing. It's really amazing, but it's really hard to keep it. Um, on top of everything that's happening. Um, we had an incident today. We had to um, ask somebody to leave. Um, so I really appreciate all of the moderators that signed up today. Thank you. So here's Lena's question. When staying off property, what's the best way to calculate food pricing? Okay, so it's just going to take a lot of research. And there are, you can go to the Disney website and look at the menus and kind of see what you might order. I mean, you don't have to decide exactly every morsel that you're going to put in your mouth on your vacation, but you can get an idea looking at menus, what you would order, what your husband would order, and, you know, just start making um, a tally of um, what the things that you would eat are going to cost. Um, I, you know, Disney does have menus on their website. I personally use allears.net. I love that site. I've loved that site for years and years and years, and they have the most comprehensive listing of menus that I have ever found. So that's my suggestion to go to allears.net. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but they really do a great job with um, showing um, all the menus and the food options. Uh, not only at the table service or quick service, but also at the snack carts and stuff. So it's going to take a little research, but it's a, it's fun research. Uh, okay, moving on. Jill Walker. Hi, Jill. I think I saw that you're here. Um, the 2018 packages are out. Yes, the 2018 packages are out. And boy, has it been a wild couple of days. <laughs> Website glitches, seeing Stitch, but we're muddling through and getting out those quotes. So 2018 packages are out. I want to plan to go to next February. Go next February. Um, if we place a deposit to book and have to change, do we get the deposit back? Absolutely. Deposits, so for a package, Disney requires a $200 deposit, and it's fully refundable up to 30 days prior to your check-in date. After that, if you needed to change, um, you would just change your date to a little bit further out, and they may charge you a $50 fee. Um, they may not, but it's fully refundable up to 30 days prior to check-in, so no worries about that. Paul Soul. Okay, Paul is another one of our new moderators. Welcome, Paul, and thank you for submitting a question. Paul says, I heard through the grapevine that at one point there was something called fairy god mailers that existed. Does this still exist now? Are there people who still participate in this? If so, what are the details and how can I participate? I think it would be so cool for my girls to get a postcard from their favorite princess prior to our trip in September. 
So Fairy Godmailers is kind of like a pay it forward with pixie dust. I mean, it's really very cute. It's an unofficial thing that started on the Diz boards. And if you're not familiar with the Diz boards, it's an online forum that has been around forever and a day, chock full of wonderful information. And so it started there. So what happens with Fairy Godmailers is people will say, hey, I'm going to Disney World. Um, could someone send a postcard with Mickey Mouse on it to my son saying, you know, we can't wait to see you. We're waiting right here for you. And then when they do that, you in turn, when you go, you do it for someone else. So you let the board know, hey, I'm here now. Anyone need a postcard? It's just constant pay it forward postcard uh, club that's really very special and nice. It's like a perfect example of the Disney community getting together and trying to make everyone's vacations like just so magical from before it even begins. So I we do have a link for this. Um, I did a little research on it, Paul, and the group is still active or the thread is still active. So Susanna or Jeremy, if you could please post the link to the Fairy Godmailers thread for Paul, um, and then hopefully someone will do it for you, Paul, and then you get to do it for someone else. All right. Barbara Dillon, you're up next. I hope you're here. We're looking at switching our travel from our normal June dates to October of 2018. I know ours will be different because of Mickey's not-so-scary Halloween party, but what else might be different? I'm worried about a lot of refurbishments during that time and missing out on rides and attractions. Okay, so you're right. The hours will be different. And this October, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party happens four nights a week. So that's definitely something to consider in your planning. Um, as far as what you might be missing in refurbishments, there's no scheduled refurbishments that happen uh, annually in October. So if something's going to be down, you know, we couldn't tell you right now. It, it just may happen. Um, there are positives to going at that time. The whole Magic Kingdom is decorated for fall. It, it's really very cute. You've got the Halloween party. Um, you've got Epcot's Food and Wine Festival going on, which also includes the Eat to the Beat concerts at Epcot. It's a great time to go. Um, I wouldn't worry about anything. Uh, ride closures, you know, and refurbs, they happen. They happen all the time. They happen for our favorite rides. You know, it's just part of the Disney ever-changing machine. They're always trying to improve and um, that's really nothing you can worry about. Um, just keep, if if it's a deal breaker for you, a ride being closed is an absolute deal, deal breaker for you. Keep up to date on the refurb schedules. Um, they put them out all the time. So, but I wouldn't worry about anything. I think October is a wonderful time to go. I love going in October. Um, it does get quite crowded. Um, now it used to you know it's no longer included in the free dining promotions um but i don't i think it's comparable to june all right let's see okay so we have uh quite a few cruise questions so i'm going to lump those all together and we'll start with Ham uh, heather hamilton banus Heather asks, we'd like to plan a Disney cruise in combination with spending a few days at Disney World in 2018 or 2019. Looking for ideas on how to make this work with Magical Express from the airport and suggestions for arrival times and dates. I'm not familiar when the ships leave and return. Do all the Disney hotels pick up for their cruise ship guests? We would be flying in from Minnesota. Have you or other guests made this work? Okay, so with a, a Disney uh, World visit and a Disney Cruise combo trip, I always recommend doing your Disney World um, trip first because you're going to wear yourself out and then your cruise, you can just kick back and relax. So doing it that way makes it pretty simple to use the Magical Express because you'll fly into Orlando International, take Magical Express to your resort, and then after your few days there, unfortunately, the transportation from your resort to the port is not complimentary. So there is a charge. 
and the the fee escapes me right now so if one of our agents could um, type that in how much that is round trip because what you would do then you would arrange for the bus to pick you up at your resort you'd go to the port take your cruise come back and then you take the bus not back to Disney World but you take it back to Orlando International Airport totally real simple it's just you have to pay for the transportation to and from the port um, so that's how you make that work. Looking for ideas on how, da, da, not familiar, when the ships leave and return. Okay, so if you go to DisneyCruiseLine.com and select, I, I think it's under uh, our itineraries, it will show you all the cruises that they have on schedule now, definitely through 2018, and I believe there's only one cruise right now for 2019 in January. Um, so that will tell you uh, the schedule. It's not like a Disney World vacation where you could say, well, I want to arrive, I want to take my cruise on a Wednesday and come home on a Saturday. You are kind of stuck to, you are definitely stuck to their schedule. Um, so that's how that works. And there's another couple of questions about our cruise. Okay, so Patricia Cobb, she's going on a Disney cruise for her 25th anniversary next February. Congratulations. Where and when should I begin my booking? Okay, so I... I recommend you contact us as your travel agent, absolutely. But if it's next February and you're talking about February 2018, there's already an itinerary schedule. So you're going to want to go to DisneyCruiseLine.com and see what itineraries um, fall in February that you'd be wanting to take. Now you should definitely um, do it sooner rather than later because the closer you get to sailing time, the higher the rate is, the cruise rate. Um, I know that sounds a little backwards. You would feel feel like it would get cheaper because they're trying to sell out. Disney cruises almost always sell out, so it will never be cheaper than it is right now. So <laughs> book as soon as you know what you want to do. And there was one other cruise question from Megan Cress. Megan says, we want to take our daughter on a Disney cruise for her 10th birthday. None, have, none of us have ever been on a cruise. What are some things I must know about booking a Disney cruise? Well, like I just said, you're going to want to book it sooner than later because the prices go up the closer you get to the sailing date. Uh, the cruise itself is absolutely magnificent. There is a reason why they are award winners year after year. The onboard entertainment is fabulous. Uh, the food is wonderful. You get a wait staff that follows you through your entire cruise. And they get to know you and what you like, what you don't like, what you like a little more of. Um, what else can I tell you about the Disney cruise? There's so much to do for kids, especially a 10 year old. She's going to absolutely love it. And not only just as a family, but there's children specific clubs and entertainment and on the flip side of that there's adult specific clubs and entertainment and you can all enjoy things together or separately it's absolutely wonderful they've got deck parties they've got fireworks um it's a wonderful way to celebrate any any birthday let alone a 10 year old that's that really really lucky if anyone has any other oh carl okay so carl you love the Disney dream. Oh, good. Thank you for posting that. A little bit more information. Oh, thank you. Okay, so Shannon says that the round trip um, transportation to and from the port is $70 per person. So you may be able to get that a little cheaper elsewhere, like with a mirror shuttle. But, you know, if it's a few bucks here and there, you might want to just stick to the convenience of booking it all through the cruise line. Okay. Da, da, da. All right, so you're getting some great information. You're welcome, Megan. I'm happy to help. And of course, if you ever have any other questions or you want a book, you know where to find us. All right, so I think what I'm going to do, make sure I got everybody on this page done. No, let's, all right, so Kim Lee has a question. My sister is running the WND Marathon in November and we are also having a dual birthday celebration this trip. I want to do something special. Any ideas or suggestions? Gift baskets, surprises, in-room celebrations, etc. Thanks in advance. Okay everyone, what do you think Kim Lee should do to celebrate 
this marathon and dual birthday celebration with her sister. Um, interim gifts are really fun, but if it's your birthday too, you gotta do something to celebrate you too, girl. Um, let's see. I would definitely do a nice, um, totally blown out dinner experience after the run, of course, so you can imbibe a little um, and have some celebratory cocktails. Um, tell us a little bit more, Kim, about your these birthdays. Are they big birthdays coming up? Is this your first run? Um, let us know, because I'm sure everyone is going to have a ton of ideas. Love the spa idea, Stephanie. Definitely. After the marathon, wonderful idea. The chef's table, Jesse, yep. Order a cake for after dinner or both. Disney Floral it is a great website um, to have in-room gift cel or celebrations made. Wine and Dine Marathon, thank you. Um, fireworks dessert party is always a lot of fun. I definitely am loving the spa day because I have a feeling you're going to be a little achy after the run. I've never done um, a Disney run. Who has? I know Casey has. And I think Cindy, Cindy Arroyo, I think you have done it too. It's honestly the only thing that will ever get me to run is a Disney marathon, but I think I'm going to have to start with like a 5K. All right, so Kim says it's her sister's first run at Disney, and you're just cheering her on on the sidelines. Okay. All birthdays are big. 33 is a big day. Why not? All right, so awesome. So, Kim, what do you think about the spa idea? Because I think that's absolutely fabulous. A little spa day for you girls, for your birthdays. I love it. <clears throat> Angela says she got two Mother's Day baskets from Disney Floral that she thought were wonderful. But check out DisneyFloral.com. They've got some great options, beautiful gifts, and they'll deliver right to the room. <laughs> Jeremy, you lost me at run. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I run for... Uh, Maybe a frozen Coke I'll run. All right, so at this point, I think we're about halfway through the questions, which is great. So I want to go through our product spotlight. So as you know, each meeting, as, as long as I can get products donated for this, um, I'm going to re rate and review a product that will either help in planning of your Disney trip, to help you um, in the parks or during your vacation, or to help cure the post-Disney blues that we all feel when we um, come home. So what I have tonight is going to really wow, I think, people who have little kids and need to use strollers. It's this wonderful new company um, that actually sought me out and I thought it was really cool. And they're called Stroller Spotters. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Let me get the directions out here. But what a stroller spotter is is it's this illuminated antenna for your stroller. You attach it to the bar and you, you turn the little light on here and it lights up and it's actually like an antenna. So you can use the Disney antenna toppers that they sell in the stores, which I absolutely love. But I mean, I haven't had a car with an antenna in like 10 years. So I just kind of admire these and I never buy them because there's nowhere for me to put them. Um, but how cool is this? So it's like a little lightsaber for your stroller. So I don't know, like I haven't had a, to use a stroller in a long time, but when I did, you know, you'd go in, you could pull up to an attraction, it says stroller parking, you park your stroller, you go in, you come out, and your stroller's nowhere to be found. And, you know, you go into panic mode at first. You're like, oh my gosh. My stroller was stolen. You start, you know, trying to catalog what was in it, what's stolen, what's missing. And then you realize everybody's stroller's gone. And a cast member just had to move it out of the way for whatever reason. But instead of having that panic mode, you have one of these babies on there. And it's really going to stick out. I mean, this is really very cool. And they actually have an awesome website with a little video that I want to show you. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I think this little um, segment really, um, let me see, what did I do there? Here we go. Watch this for a second. Oh. 
Well, we have no sound. Okay. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Here we go. Hi everyone, welcome to Stroller Spotter. Stroller Spotter antennas and antenna choppers are a fun new way to find your stroller in a crowd, display your favorite antenna chopper, and increase stroller safety to make it more visible at night. With the ever-growing amount of strollers at theme parks and events, finding yours quickly can be a challenge, but not anymore. Meet the Stroller Spotter antenna. It's an 18-inch, non-collapsible, but easily storable illuminated rod, which can easily be seen in the dark. The Stroller Spotter cool comes in two versions, straight and angled, and in eight different colors. The straight antenna is best for strollers with a bar that goes across the width of the stroller, as well as scooters and wheelchairs. And the angled antenna can be used on all stroller types, especially strollers with two handles. To use your stroller spotter, simply turn the base counterclockwise until the light is illuminated. This ensures that the antenna is in the correct position and gives you peace of mind that you can find your stroller if it gets dark while you're away. So how cool is that, right? Let me just go here. I think it's really neat. I love the product. Um, it makes your stroller easy to find, or like she said, even a wheelchair if you, you need a wheelchair. Um, in a sea of strollers and wheelchairs at night, it can be difficult to find. So I think this is really super cool. And tonight, one lucky person is going to get this. Um, so it comes in eight colors. Um, so what I had picked out for you guys, and I think that the best one that would help the most people because you could use this on any type of stroller is the angled one. So you could use this on an umbrella stroller or on across the top bar if you needed to. Um, so I got a purple one and I also got this cute Mickey pumpkin antenna topper. So purple and orange, this would be perfect for anyone traveling to Walt Disney World during the fall months where it's all decorated for Halloween. Um, so definitely check it out. It's strollerspotter.com. And what I love about this company is that, number one, they'll not only ship to the U.S., but they'll also ship to Canada. Steph, tell your friends up in Canada. And the batteries will last up to 150 hours. So that's going to take you well through your entire Disney vacation. Um, and then some. And also, I mean, it's such a super cool thing. Um, and you attach it you know, with a Velcro strip. So it's also, you know, some unsavory people might consider stealing it from you. And if you do, this company offers a one-time product replacement if it gets stolen. I think that's really amazing customer service. Um, so check them out. It's strollerspotter.com. And if you could definitely benefit from this and could use it, you know someone, or you're going to a baby shower for a Disney-loving new mom and dad, um, write in the comments that, yes, I would like to be considered to win this, pro this uh, prize tonight. I wanted to go to people who can actually use it. I know this is a pretty specific demographic for this particular product. So just let me know in the comments that you do want to be entered to win it tonight. So I make sure it does go to somebody who could really use it, really wants it. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. Strollerspotter.com, and I am sure that the link was posted here. If not, please, Jeremy and Susanna, post it in there. Um, orange and purple for cleansing colors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of my neighbors is a cleansing fanatic. I am all familiar with cleansing. So I just thought the purple and the orange would be really cute for Halloween. So Stroller Spotter. Com. Oh, you know, I did take some pictures just to show how real simple it was. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Dun, dun, dun. So we did this. So like I said, I don't have a stroller, but I do have a new baby niece. And so I borrowed her stroller. And it's so simple. It's just this Velcro strap. You put it through the loop. You flip it up and attach it to itself. And there it is, just sitting there. All illuminated. You can leave it on all day. Like she said, the batteries last, you know, almost forever. So that is our product spotlight for today. 
All right, moving on. I'm losing my voice. I'm talking too much. How are we doing on time here? Okay, 40 minutes. Okay. So, Matthew, Matthew Sinico. Matthew, you're going to have to tell me how exactly to pronounce your name so I get it right every time. Matthew is another one of our moderators. Thank you so much, Matthew, and welcome aboard the team. Matthew asks, is it ever too late to switch companies who you're planning doing your Walt Disney World trip? We are under 60 days and do not like the company we are using now. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, Matthew. They have not and will not help us get the room or extra experiences we want. And if it's not too late, how will we change? All right, so unfortunately, it is too late. Um, you have the opportunity to transfer your reservation uh, to another agency within 30 days after that. Um, you can ask them to release the reservation to you, I believe. Um, it's kind of a sticky situation uh, because I also am a travel agent and um, I don't want to, huh, I'm trying to help you. Um, typically, to transfer a reservation to us, you have had to have made it on your own within 30 days. Transferring from one agency to another, I'm not exactly certain how you would go about that without um, there being some bad blood between the two agencies, but you could definitely express your displeasure with that agent and ask them to release the reservation back to you and then just continue coming in the group and getting our help. Um, you know, we'll gladly help you plan whatever you need. I know you just got your fast passes, so there really isn't much more that you need to do unless you're stuck and um, aren't happy with the room that you got. Um, so why don't you talk to me um, outside of the meeting, but in general, um, if you've booked a reservation within 30 days, you can transfer to an agent of your choice. Um, okay, just curious. Okay. Thanks, Shannon. You know, I was a little stuck on that. I don't, you know, I know it's a touchy subject. You don't want anyone poaching guests from other people, but if you're not happy, Matthew, um, you certainly have the right to request that you, your control back of your reservation. Okay, moving on. Jill Walker, another question from Jill. The in-laws may join us for part of the trip. Um, I plan on booking our trip soon. How long do I have before I need to add them to our reservation? Okay, so Jill, you can make any modification to a package up to 72 hours prior to check-in. Um, if they're just going to I know that you have you want to have dining for your package if they're only going to be overnight guests that might be something that you can deal with upon um, their arrival at the desk but if you want to make fast passes to include your in-laws then you will want to add them prior to the 60 days so you can all ride together um, so I hope that helps you so um, technically within 72 hours you can add them to a package but I do recommend doing it 60 days prior so you can all do fast passes together. Okay, Jessica Hoffman. If you only had a few hours in the late evening, say from 7 p.m. on with no kids, what would you do? Extra magic hours, nice supper, shopping? Well, unless I don't have the opportunity to enjoy a nice dinner with my husband um, regularly, I wouldn't waste that time uh, sitting in a restaurant. Um, but if I don't, if that would be a luxury, I think I would try for a reservation at Epcot at, say, Rose and Crown or La Hacienda, right where we could view the fireworks uh, during our dinner. I think that would be a nice romantic evening. And then just walk around World Showcase. It is so incredibly magical over there. Um, I love the World Showcase and I find not so much anymore. My daughter is 13 but when she was little man she was always asking me to look at stuff and oh look at this and taking my attention away so when we did have the opportunity to tour the World Show Showcase you know kid free it was amazing. So if you can plan it when it's an extra magic hour night and you have your dinner and you see your fireworks and then you still have a couple of hours left um, that's what I would do. How about you guys? You have any suggestions for Jessica? 
how would you spend uh, a few blissful, child-free hours? <laughs> Kim would take a nap. <laughs> oh, Casey, you're with me, girl. We'd wander uh, the Epcot World Showcase together. Jelly Rolls is a ton of fun, too. So I don't know if any of you are familiar with Jelly Rolls, but it's this dueling piano bar, and they... I swear, they literally know every song and will sing it, and they're so funny, and um, they have free popcorn. A lot of fun. And it's over at the boardwalk. So even if you did have dinner at Epcot, you could simply walk over to Jelly Rolls, finish off your night. It, whatever you do, Jessica, it's going to be absolutely wonderful because you're at Disney World, and you don't have kids, and it's going to be magical. All right, next question is from Sheena Brown Jones. How hard is it to change your reservation? I was supposed to go this year, but money is tight and I have to go next year. Sheena, you can get your deposit back so long as it's within 30 days of your check-in date. Or you can just keep your deposit going and continue to change it. If you're changing before 30 days, no problem. After 30 days, they may charge you a change fee. Um, so right now I'm going to take a break and we're going to do the trivia question. So Dave Shute of YourFirstVisit.net sponsors a trivia question. Thank you, Dave, so much. The winner of the trivia question gets a signed copy of the Easy Guide to Your Walt Disney World Visit, compliments of Dave Shute. It's a wonderful book. I've read it cover to cover, and I think that there's um, a new update coming out, I believe, very shortly. Dave, if you can confirm that. Yay! Um, so, the trivia question is, what is the name of the statue that depicts Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse that sits in front of Cinderella Castle? That actually has a name. What is it? So I will select one winner at random from all the correct answers to that trivia question. So have that. Update is coming soon. Great. Thank you, Susanna, for posting the link to yourfirstvisit.net. Also a great resource. I use it often. All right. A few more questions to go, and then we're going to call it a night because I'm losing my voice. All right. John Schetzel. I hope I said that right. One of my pet peeves are all the acronyms we use, not only here, but in our texting world. Question, is there a source for Disney acronyms? For example, I don't have a clue what MNSSHP is. All right, John, so that means Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. I've actually come up with a little freebie download on my website. I think um, Jeremy and Susanna have the link there. Now I can't remember if I sent it, but if not... Just go to getdowntodisney.com, and under Community, there's a free stuff tab, and it's in there. There's this lady with crazy ears on saying, what does it mean? And so it's not all of the acronyms, but it's the most popular ones. And I know it is frustrating when you have no idea what people are saying. So that's a great question. Thank you. Barbara Dillon. Oh, Barbara, you just you responded to, to John. Yes, I do have one on my website. Thank you. All right, so we got the cruise questions. Susan Trentini, how do I convince my husband to go again? He wants to wait for Star Wars Land to open, but I just can't do it. Star Wars Land isn't going to open until sometime in 2020, uh, I think, even if they're, they're on schedule. Huh, how do you get him to go? You beg, you plead, you tell him happy wife, happy life. Um, tell them that there's a ton of cool Star Wars stuff there now at Hollywood Studios that may not be there when Star Wars Land opens, so he's not going to want to miss out on that stuff, so you got to get that all in before it goes away. Um, other than that, Susan, um, good luck. If anyone else has some pointers for Susan to get her husband to go again, uh, please offer them up. I've done my best. Lisa Barnes. Hi, Lisa. When doing the Phineas and Ferb Agent P's World Showcase Adventure, do they assign you a country or can you pick one? Or can you pick one that you want to explore? If you want to do more than one, do you have to go back to the headquarters or can you start another one from your phone or smartphone in the World Showcase? Trying to decide if this would be worth including in our next trip. Our kids will be 10 and 7. Yes! It is so much fun. Actually, the last time that I did it, it was just me and my husband and we had a blast. So... Um, yes, you can choose the time and location. You go to the little um, 
stands, I forget what they call them, but you sign up there and you choose where you want to go and the time that you want to do it. It lasts about 30, 45 minutes, depending on how fast you run through the clues. Um, a tip that I can tell you is that if it happens to be raining that day, choose Mexico because all the clues and stuff are inside so you can do your adventure still and stay dry. Um, whether you want to do another one, you probably won't want to. It does take a little bit of time, but if you do, if you're using your smart, I don't know if you can just move on to the next adventure. If anybody knows for sure, let me know. We just did the one and we did not have their device. We just used the cell phone so we didn't have to go back to talk to anybody. So if you know for sure if you can just keep doing these adventures, um, please let Lisa know. But you can definitely choose a time and location that you want to start at. I hope that was helpful. And definitely for 10 and 7, so fun. Definitely do it. There, that's one of those things at Epcot that really help kids enjoy the World Showcase. I know some some parents are worried that their kids are going to be bored at World Showcase. I don't get it. My daughter loves the World Showcase. There's so much to do between the KidCot. There are attractions. You can do um, the passports and talk to cast members. There's great shopping. And, of course, there's the Phineas and Ferb adventure. I love Epcot. I think they'll have a great time. Angela Blackman has a question. I know you're here, Angela. I hope you're still here. Um, is it better to do fast passes early in the morning or hit rope drop and fast pass in the afternoon and evening? Okay, so you're going to get two different philosophies here. That is my philosophy. Get to the park at rope drop. Ride as many headliners as I can without using fast pass when the lines are as short as they'll ever be during the day. First thing in the morning, the lines will be as short as they're ever going to be. So my strategy is to get there at rope drop, ride the popular attractions that I can up until around 11 or so. Then I break for lunch or something. And by then, I'll have pre-scheduled fast passes for noon and after. Now, if your goal is to get as many fast passes per day, if you're, you know, in the interest of science trying to see how many you can get, by all means, schedule them early and then keep trying to get those fast passes one after the other. But no, they won't, they won't, they probably won't be for any headliner attractions. They'll be sold out long before you'll, you'll get there. Um, so my strategy is definitely get there early, ride what you can without fast pass, and have your pre-selected fast passes start from noon and on. But if someone else has um, their strategy they'd like to share, please share that with Angela so she can have you know both sides of the coin. And our final question is from Julie Fetter. Planning our next trip in December 2017, is there enough open at Disney's Hollywood Studios to justify a day there when there are seasonal opportunities elsewhere? Julie, I wonder if you're here because I'm a little confused by what you mean when you say seasonal opportunities elsewhere. Do you mean other theme parks um, or do you mean inside Walt Disney World other things to do? I love Hollywood Studios, and I still think it's worth a day there. Um, there are amazing shows, some absolutely fantastic attractions that you won't want to miss, and especially if you're traveling with someone who loves Star Wars. Um, there's a ton to do there. Um, I, you know, it's not you know um, a 9 a.m. to midnight park by any means, but. There's definitely um, enough to keep you occupied for the entire day. And they've got some of the best themed restaurants with some great food. Sci-Fi, Mama Melrose, 50s Primetime, Brown Derby. I mean, some of the best restaurants are over in Hollywood Studios. So I don't think that you would regret spending a day at Hollywood Studios. All right, let's see. Let me just catch up with some of these comments. Oh, like, uh, yeah, like the seasonal events at Epcot. I'm not sure. I don't think Julie Fetter is here. But, Julie, if you're watching on the replay, just let us know so um, we have a better idea of what you mean um, with this question. If it's Hollywood Studios versus another Disney park, like you have to choose, um, I'd like to know that to help better advise you on that. So just, you know, make your comments in the comment and... Um, we can get to that 
um, via text message another day. Okay, I've been talking for 55 minutes and I'm losing my voice, so thank you guys for being here. Um, let me just catch up here. Well, Brown Derby saw yes, and Leanne says you can meet Olaf in Hollywood Studios. That's the only place you can meet him. <clears throat> totally agree. Best, best, best. All right, so yeah, so Steph is um, pretty much on my track. So Dave Shoot says he writes itineraries for all the parks and can assure you that Studios is a full day park. I absolutely, wholeheartedly agree with that. I love Hollywood Studios, and yes. Half the park is closed for construction of two brand new lands, but um, take advantage of that because you can finish that whole park in one day now. In the future, you will not be. It will be a two-day park at least. All right, so I'm going to start the after-party thread in the group. I hope you'll all join me. I'm actually giving away, where is it? one of my Get Down to Disney's Daily Agenda books in the after party for anyone, there's Seamus, for anyone who posts a picture of the Disney food item that they just cannot wait to have, whether you've had it before and want it again, or you've just seen a picture of it and you've been salivating thinking about it. Post a picture of that in the after party thread and I'll pick one winner at random at the end of the night and you'll get a book and an erasable pen with that. Uh, yes, after party. So join us. We'll be sticking around for about another half an hour for some more fun and chat. I want to thank you guys for being here. I hope you had a good time. I hope you liked the new view. Um, Seamus says good night, and I'll see you in the after party. Take care, guys.